สวัสดีครับ and good afternoon once again Saturday 8th of May 2021 I'd like to start off first with an issue to get it out of the way it's very important as well it concerns the understanding of a news report uh, in terms of foreign embassies and the foreign nationals here so there had been a media outlet that had erroneously reported that foreign embassies in Thailand can make vaccines available to their nationals. So we would like to reiterate that foreign nationals, expats, diplomats, everyone working here, as well as all other uh, people living in Thailand are included in the national vaccine rollout plan. And COVID vaccines will be ma made available to them through the second phase of the plan, starting from June until the end of this year. So I've been asked to clarify this, um, not to, for people not to contact their embassies and expect to uh, receive a vaccine rollout from the embassies it, itself. So as far as we know, that's not uh, true. That's not, that's not happening right now. Dr. Pisamai gave us very important information. One was about Bangkok, the situation in Bangkok. Now, in Bangkok right now, with the many clusters, risk clusters, the mild, sim mild symptoms group and the asymptomatic group in Bangkok is, is quite high. Uh, quite higher than the severe patients group. So that's the highest um, prevalence of uh, COVID in, in Bangkok. So the mild and asymptomatic group. Now, two things are being done. Firstly, of course, is that vaccine rollouts in terms of emergency rollout will be allocated to Bangkok Metropolitan Administration staff, especially those who work in the public transportation sector, buses, boats, and everybody who works for the public actually, and is under the uh, BMA. Another part of it is about active case finding. Now you know about the Klong Tei district uh, cluster. So Klong Tei district and various clusters and various districts uh, in that area. So we are conducting strong active case finding in those districts, sort of like we go where the flame is. We follow where the flame is and we try to put it out as soon as possible. So I'll move on to the number of cases recorded for today. 2,419 new confirmed case. Just mind you that today we have new recoveries at 2,247. So if you do the math, actually around 200 new cases are placed into the system today because 2,004 new cases, but 2,002 plus of new recoveries. So around 200 more cases added to the group. Now out of this new confirmed case, 2,419, we have most of them from local transmission and active case finding and only 10 from within the state quarantine system. Active cases, as you see in the green, dark green box on screen, currently being under, untreated, is 29,473. Out of these, this number, 1,138 are cases of critical condition. And out of that number, 380 are those on ventilators. Unfortunately, we have 19 new fatalities recorded, making the cumulative 382. Eight male, 11 female in this group of fatalities. Age range is 42 to 93. Once again, uh, the elderly, this affects the elderly. And the median age is 68. In terms of provinces, fatalities, we have seven in Bangkok, two each from Samut, Prakan, and Patum Thani. And the other provinces, we have one each. Nine fatalities were those in close contact with family members, three with confirmed cases, two close contact with friends, and uh, three went visited crowded areas, um, especially malls. Now, today, the province with the highest new confirmed case is, of course, Bangkok and uh, Non Taburi, and you see some of that detail on screen in terms of the provincial breakdown. We also have a chart, I believe, uh, regarding the districts in Bangkok as well, the number of cases in Bangkok uh, districts. So 
Many of the confirmed cases have been reported that they have been to markets and have used public transportation. So this proves that infections are coming from these two particular areas. And local authorities and uh, factory owners have been asked to be more vigilant in monitoring migrants as well in the area as a large number of our workers, migrants, from neighboring countries have been found to enter Thailand illegally, uh, illegally during these uh, days through the natural borders. Now, talking about Bangkok again and the peripheral areas, uh, having the highest number of confirmed cases every day, with confirmed case standing at 1,641 today in Bangkok. Now, active case findings in these areas have been beefed up to stem the spread of virus. However, the Clusters in Bangkok under surveillance include Prom Pomprap, Satru Pai, Dusit, uh, Pranakorn districts, and other districts as well. Now, there are more active case findings uh, that will be carried out in the risk areas and infected clusters today. The CCSA asking for everyone's cooperation so that uh, this mission can be successful. There will also be the opening up of a new field hospital called Bussara Kam Hospital opened at Impact Mueng Tong Thani, the Challenger Hall there. It's an exhibi exhibition hall, if you're familiar. So that will become a field hospital to cater to patients uh, infected with COVID in the area. Additional information, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration has extended the temporary closure of premises as the number of confirmed cases in Bangkok is still high. The BMA decided to stem the outbreak by extending the temporary closure of certain premises until May the 17th. Now, these affected by the order include schools, and you have that order uh, on screen, but it might, the font might be too small. But uh, schools, entertainment venues, public parks, and while shopping malls can open until 9 p.m. and convenience stores until 10 p.m. So this is an extension of the closures of various places. Also, for those fully recovered patients, if you wish to donate blood past plasma, the Thai Red Cross is in need of this. For those who are fully recovered patients and wondering how they can help, the Thai Red Cross urgently are urging fully recovered patients to donate blood plasma, which contains antibodies that can be used as the key component to treat COVID patients with severe conditions. And plasma treatment in life-threatening cases also show a higher percentage of recovery. More plasma donations means the survival rate will be higher in Thailand. As you see from the infographic on screen, uh, qualified donors must be fully recovered and have been discharged from hospital and complete the self-quarantine at home for 14 days. And for more information, you can look at the contact numbers on screen. One good news of piece of information is about the vaccine vision, the vaccine supply of Thailand, where the prime minister ordered a large number of additional doses of vaccines. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that there are 2.5 million doses of vaccines set to arrive this month. The Public Health Ministry also confirmed that there will be 10 to 20 million doses of Pfizer vaccines delivered to Thailand in the latter half of this year. And the Prime Minister also planned to order another 200, up to 200 million doses within the year to ensure that there are enough vaccines for everyone on Thai soil, with the aim of having 50% of the elderly in the country get the first jab by the end of July. Now, I'm talking about 50% of elderly uh, in that group, not the entire uh, population in terms of the uh, percentage. Now, <clears throat> the vaccines, of course, they will be allocated uh, to Bangkok uh, if it's talking about the immediate allocation in Bangkok, around half of the, around 3 million doses for Bangkok because of the cluster and the important clusters that we are facing in Bangkok these, these days. So the daily CCSA meeting this morning discussed many important uh, issues. Uh, one question that was posed was about the uh, authenticity of the numbers that we present to reassure you that we present you with the facts. Um, the numbers are not hidden um, anywhere. Now, if the numbers are around 1,000 or 2,000 per day, 
It is also because of the active case finding missions that we have been conducting in many, many areas, particularly in, in Bangkok. Now, when we have around 1,000 plus, 1,100 plus cases in critical condition, uh, Dr. Apisamai re uh, reaffirmed that this is a number that is still quite manageable in terms of the critical condition uh, patients that we have out of around 2,000 plus per day, right now currently 1,000 plus critical condition. So quite, quite manageable. And before ending, I'd just like to uh, reiterate the importance of contact tracing, the number of confirmed cases uh, rising steadily, but manageable, hopefully. We cannot overlook the issue about contact tracing, how we can curb transmission. So in the infographic, credit to the World Health Organization shown here, if you've been confirmed to be infected, it's, it's best for you to provide all the details of where you have been, the timeline to health authorities. It's, that's very, very important so that they will be able to trace and identify people that you know, that you have met, who might be at risk in contracting the disease as well. So like I've mentioned before, to prevent the further outbreak, the responsibility starts with you, starts with me, starts with all of us. And to protect, uh, to protect others around you, you must first protect yourself. Thank you for your kind attention, and please enjoy the rest of the weekend, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Sorry, Cap.